Hey folks, we're here. We're live. Hopefully you can hear everything well enough. Coffee bar, piano, <laughs> piano black, something like that. Right. Hey, folks, if, if you're here and if you can hear us well enough, give us a, a, a thumbs up in the chat. We got Dak piped, piped in the sound here. We got myself here playing. Oh, this is from Cowboy Bebop. Cool. Wait, who knew what it was? Uh, Two Fisted Death in the chat. They recognized it. Is yeah, that something that... Was, that's yeah, Piano Bar 1 from Cowboy Bebop. Piano Bar 1. Oh, there's there's multiple piano bars? I think that's... I'm still waiting <laughs> on the sequel, actually. <laughs> that's the one and only. Folks, can you hear Dak well enough? Oh, I actually, I think this is the cleanest, the most cleanest signal we've got going. Wow. Unprecedented. You're getting all those little turnarounds, all the three, six, two, five ones. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's it. Piano's good. Voices maybe a touch quiet. Well, I think overall, it's. I think it'll work. Is is my voice quiet? Because I can adjust that. I think if you really just get your your mouth right if up I on just, the grill. If I just get like way up in there. Right up that, in there. Right up in the grill. <laughs> the griddle. Cool. All right. Well, we don't definitely don't have echo this time. Perfect. All right, folks. So welcome. If you're here for um. For the VGM uh, appreciation and lear learning video game music on piano uh, stream, type one in the chat if you're here. I, I know um, it, Dax here. I'm, I'm glad Dax. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of lean on. I'm leaning on Dax big time today. Dax a good. Uh, he's a good guy to to say stop. What was that? <laughs> or yeah. what what what's the yeah, what, catchphrase? What's, what's the, what's the name? Uh, right there. What's that? It, right there. It, what's that? Yeah. I, this this happens a lot whenever uh, Robbie and I are just uh, hanging out in a video chat or doing something anyway where he'll just be playing and then he'll go off in a very Robbie Benson style and then I'll be like, oh, stop right there. What's <laughs> that? And uh, and it's really fun because it's always a surprise whether or not he knows what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We we all find out as as soon as you ask, we figure it out. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so this is gonna be fun. Yeah. So I guess kind of the format for this particular stream is going to be. Um, we actually just did a, a stream on Super Soul Bros a few minutes ago, and we raided over to Fan Gamer here, um, and I was doing a bunch of Earthbound tunes on um, on the Super Soul Bros stream because uh, we had. Someone who actually had attended Camp Fan Gamer, um, uh, Ari, who had, uh, he's a huge Earthbound fan, and his mom uh, had coordinated for us to do a special graduation announcement for Ari, and then I played a bunch of Earthbound tunes for him as well. Oh, that's awesome. It was re really cool, and um, just a lot of fun. All his family and friends were there, um, and he's just, he his mind was blown, not just with the stream, but also... Uh, Camp Fan Gamer. When he was there, he uh, he that's where he learned about Super Soul Bros. and oh, um, wow. and he's just been a, a major fan ever since. And so I thought maybe we could keep the Earthbound theme going for this stream, and uh, especially since Fan Gamer is majorly uh, involved in the in the Earthbound scene. Um, and so <laughs> yeah, John, artist live, Nina Mutsumuro. Yeah, I don't know if they changed the title, but for now we're we are the collective Nina right now, Dak. On the oh, <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> is that coming through? By the that way, that is coming through. It's a little soft, but we can hear it. I mean, I can I can crank it up, but this is like I want it to be background music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect background level. So, uh, Super Soul Bros. We learned a bunch of Earthbound material for Camp Fan Gamer. This was back in 2015, I want to say. Yeah, 2015. And 
essentially we uh, we learned so much of the material of the Earthbound soundtrack um, because we were going to play it live during the Camp Fan Gamer charity stream that they called the EB Bash. And so in the in the process of learning all of that stuff, um, it just seemed really natural for us to put put those tracks to use and actually record them in the studio. And so we made Motherload, which was our our ode to the Mother series um, album. And it's got about 16 tracks on there, all from Mother 1, 2, and 3. And uh, what we're listening to right now is Pollyanna, um, which is... Uh, a track that that occurs in all three mother games actually mm. and so i was thinking today um the format here is what we'll talk about some of the tracks on mother load dak is at random intervals gonna say hold on what's that yeah. and and with your encouragement you can get him to to do that as well because he's going to be monitoring uh the chat he'll be looking at any questions that y'all have so i want this to you know just be a big dialogue interactive uh kind of informal Q&A thing. Um, so if you have any questions at any given time about video game music or especially Earthbound stuff, uh, give us a holler in the chat. So maybe... So let's, 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 yeah, go let's, ahead. Let's, let's talk about this track right here. Yeah. Uh, so is this... I, I don't know if I'm remembering this right, but was this like an actual pop song, like a Japanese pop song that made it into Earthbound or something? It's... It, um, it it was there was an arranged album for Mother Two or actually Mother One. So this okay. is a track. Uh, it, it was an official Mother album. It was a an LP, and all of these tracks, um, <clears throat> Pollyanna especially, they were uh, usually I think they had famous singers uh, both from the U.S. as well as Japan and and probably elsewhere uh, where they we're singing lyrics to these songs that are in the game, but this was a full jazz arranged album. And, uh, so it was kind of in a pop sense originally. Um, it went kind of like, it's more of like a 120 BPM, one right. of those kind of pop tempo tunes, upbeat. And, um, and then it's also used in a lot of different... That melody is used throughout Mother as a little motif. Um, in Mother 2, or Earthbound as we know it in the States, that's where I uh, I first heard it. And mm. it's, it's, it's Ness's home song. So it's the song that plays when you go to Ness's house. And it's slowed down in that version. So in that one, it's like... Same melody, same progression... But just a slower, more um, uh, maybe sentimental kind of uh, version of it. They also um, they they forego the uh, the bridge. There's a bridge in Pollyanna that goes to the to to a minor key. Yeah. Right. So that's like the the bridge or the the B section of the tune, and that's totally removed in the huh. in the in the Ness House tune. But they do add in this extra little phrase in between. Um, so here here's how it goes in in Mother One or on the Mother One album. It's like upbeat, and they got all these sections. So that's a full phrase there. And then eventually it goes to... Um, so you got like these two sections that just kind of cookie cutter, A section, B section, A section, B section. Um, Whereas in Mother 2, um, in Earthbound, 
they mm-hmm. slow it down and they remove that B section, but they kind of break they break up the A sections with this extra little phrase that's just going between two chords. So the earthbound version is like this. Okay, so so yeah. right there. Sure, you know, sure. You, you, you kind of have this walking motion. It's like... Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to play that really quick one more time with the overhead yeah. camera so they can see what... Watch my left hand. This is what makes this tune really uh, pretty, pretty slick. It, it goes like this. The left hand down here. Check out what's happening. So it's it's essentially walking down the scale. It, you have this very clear linear movement. Um, yeah, right. You get this. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a flat three, three, right. flat three, two. And then that brings us right back to the one. And now and then it goes through the same phrase again. Hmm. So the whole entire phrase actually goes through that cycle twice. Do, 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 and that's now we're right back to G to start all over again. So that's just it seems like that's just a uh, standard major scale, but you're but you have that flat three in there. Yeah, yeah. It, we get this extra little uh, extra chord popping in, and and it, and that goes outside of the scale. So so this is. The concept of that is like modulating, playing right. outside of the scale. So this, the the key that this tune is in is G major, and the G right. major scale is all all the white keys except for F, which is F sharp. So you've got a black key instead of F. You have F sharp here. Do, 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 do. So the the bass is walking down the scale. Do 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 do. Mm-hmm. Walking down the G major scale, but then suddenly oh it boy. goes. Yeah, what's that? Ooh, doo doo oh, face that. moment. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> ooh. ooh. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> I need to take a shower there. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what that's what perks our ears. That's what gets us right. m- even more interested because we're not staying just in a scale. Now we're we're going like, outside the scale. Let's let's take that just to like the key of C. You know, if I just mm-hmm. go. What's the next note? Everybody thinks it's going to be right, but but if if we're doing uh, polyonic, right? Ooh, whoa! <laughs> Out of left field, yeah. And 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 what's cool there is that the melody throughout the whole thing, uh, the melody is working just in the scale. So the melody, if I cut to this. Here, I'll bring it down here. Mm -hmm. All the melody notes are working just with the G major scale. So then, even though the, the melody is staying in the scale, what changes the whole sound of it and the context of it is when the bass goes to that to that E flat there. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, to the B flat. Right. I'm thinking C major now. Yeah. So the melody could, it's staying within a diatonic center. That's a big word for basically meaning staying in, a, in one scale. So G major is our scale. And so if we play notes that are just in the G major scale, that's playing diatonically. Diatonic is like sticking to that scale. Um, the melody is diatonic. But the bass is going outside, and that changes the whole context behind the melody to make it sound cool. Can, can you tell us what diatonic means? 
Yeah, I just mentioned it. Um, oh, sorry. It's, yeah, was, yeah, it's all good. I was replying to a guy. <laughs> it's good. And we're we're right now. Dak and I are talking live, but he's also watching the video, which is probably six seconds latency. And so it's it's a perfect so, it's a perfect it's loop wonderful. of feedback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, diatonic is sticking to one scale. Like if we're working in G major, if we only play the notes that are in G major, then that means we're playing diatonically. Um, so that the chord change there, mm -hmm. just for that moment, it becomes non-diatonic. And, uh, and so we would say we're modulating out of the scale. We're modulating outside. Can you think of any other uh, songs that do that in a yes. similar fashion? That's a great example, uh, or a good, great question. And I have a, maybe an okay example. <laughs> uh, Green Hill Zone is a great example. So Green okay. Hill Zone... It stays in the C major scale. Uh, there are two halves to the to Green Hill Zone. The first half is da -da 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 all that stuff. That's the A section, and then the B section goes da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I'll, I'll just play this really quick. Green Hill Zone is in the C major scale, so that means it's all white keys. So mm -hmm. let's listen to, or at least it starts in the C major scale, and all the A section is diatonic. It's all staying with this, the white keys here. So... So we're hanging out just all in the C major zone. But then to, to perk our ears up and get us hearing something new and interesting, uh, the B section goes outside of the scale. It, it modulates outside. We go to this B flat here. Now we've got an A flat and an E flat happening. And then it eventually arrives at our G chord, which propels us back to expecting a, a C major sound. Back to our C major. Yeah, and that, that's a pretty common movement in like all music, right? Yeah, um, uh, the idea of playing a five chord, um, yeah, a five chord to kind of center our, our ears or focus our ears on what's to come. So anytime you would... Uh, want to get everyone's ears ready for the key that we're going to start to listen to or that we might even be singing, um, you play the five chord because that's it's saying, hey, folks, get ready. We're about to go here. And so a great example of that idea is when you're, if you were to play piano at a birthday party and everyone's about to sing happy birthday, how does everyone automatically know what key to sing in? assuming they they're able to sing in a key um <laughs> right so if i were to play piano i would try to center everyone's ears on f major f major is the, usually the key that happy birthday's played in right now so so we would have right right yeah. so our home for that would be f major so to get everyone's ears expecting that i would play the 5 of that which is c and i would make a big dominant 5 7 chord to get everyone's ears ready and that, that now we have an idea. We have this is an expectation. It's like setting setting a an expectation. Where are we gonna land? Right here. Happy birthday. Here's the one chord, and now back to the five chord. Da, da, da. So, just in a in a simple sense, that's that's an example of a five chord getting our ears attuned to um, to a new destination. So, uh, Tofi in chat um, mm -hmm. says, uh, so it briefly moves into the parallel minor. I think he's probably talking about back when we were doing Sonic. Um, because we yeah. Were kinda, yeah. That would make sense. And, um, and I honestly, my musical theory knowledge uh, or my familiarity of parallel minor, I wouldn't be able to comment on that. But it, let's see. Duh. Would, are, if you're referring to um, 
it, it's not going to the the relative minor, but I'm not sure what parallel minor is referring to. Uh, I you play also, the B flat. I mean, it 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 is. It's basically just going to C minor, sort of, for a second. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Well, I mean, the progression is mm -hmm. uh, take you know taking it down. Yeah. It's true. It, it kind of starts wobbling. It, it's moving in half steps, so you could think of it as kind of modulating each time. It's it's going in and out of um, of the C major scale. And uh, Nepi Data says, uh, with regards to Happy Birthday, uh, well, you played B flat, which makes it a C dominant question mark because without knowing it's an F, you got to really point towards it. Um, let's see, makes it a C, absolutely, yeah. right. Yeah. So if I were to play just a five chord, if I just played C major, that wouldn't tell us anything. That that would almost sound maybe like like C is our home now. Yeah. But but when you add a B flat there, something that, um, something with a flat seventh interval. Yeah, and Nepi, Nepi clarifies for happy birthday, we're just playing a chord out of nowhere, which is, you're right. You know, normally, if you you know start with a chord, that that feels like where you know the key is going to be. But since you're starting with that dominant sound, you're already starting in a sort of unresolved position. So you're like, right? You know? Absolutely. Yeah. the 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 fact that it's a dominant chord that's that's integral to creating that expectation. Um, a dominant chord is always going to make us feel unresolved and 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 feel like oh i need to hear this resolve somewhere and whether or not we know it our ears expect to hear that resolution be a, f a fifth away from it so oh, the five oh, seven chord brings us to the one chord i love this question from uh metal melee master mm -hmm. by the way great name <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, they ask, how do you avoid that crunchy dissonance in your chord voicings, especially when improvising and modulating between keys quickly? Great question. Yeah. And Espe I would especially say... Especially because, like, for me, I'm always looking for that crunchy dissonance. Like, <laughs> I, I, want, I want as much stank you want, face you, as you want, you want the flaming Hot Crunchy Baked mm. Cheetos. <laughs> mm. Whew. I want that heartburn. <laughs> Uh, the uh, so I, I think what you're saying is uh, what Midi Metal Melee Master is asking is how do you avoid kind of that jarring dominant sound uh, when you're but while still having a functional dominant chord to bring us somewhere um, here's what I would say here, let me give you a couple examples here I'm going to play a tune and then I'm going to keep moving our, our ears to a different key I'm going to keep mm. using five chords to, to bring us somewhere else. And I'll do, try it a couple times here. Let's see if I, if I don't botch this. Let's see. My keyboard's acting kind of funky here, or the, uh, the volume's kind of acting up on, on my mixer. Hopefully y'all can hear me okay there. It, it is a little weird, but I, I can hear it. Okay, here. There we go. Might be a loose cable. in a lot of directions when you learn how to <laughs> when you use five seven chords with 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 owning five seven chords mm -hmm. you, comes great great uh ability and responsibility <laughs> I, I i gotta invite you to my next birthday party that's, that's <laughs> you can make sure every that's how you can divert you can get everyone singing in all 12 keys at once so you kind of did a thing there you were like and then you were like, I don't know what you did. You, you just. I did. Yeah, I basically. Yeah, I essentially, I did some passing tones to kind of bring us somewhere else. That's not necessary. Here, let me give a, a different example here. And then okay. I'll explain how, I, how I'm moving us to different keys. Let's see.
So essentially at at random at random points or whenever I feel like it if I can pull it off s- smoothly I'm going to a five chord of a totally different scale and then as soon as that happens that kind of reverts our ears it gives us a new clean palette a new it, it washes our <laughs> our senses it gives us a <laughs> and we're ready it seems totally logical when I finally land on the one chord it, okay, it's, so it sounds intentional or let's, understandable. Let's run. Let's run through that. Let's run through that uh, that modulation, that that little progression you did. Yeah. There. So where did you start? So at the beginning, this little Yoshi's Island map song, it's usually in G major, and so and it's you start on the one chord. So we're on G major. <laughs> Now from here, I went to. Uh, so I'm in G major, and I decided yeah. to go up a half step to A flat. Okay. And so, what's the what's the five of A flat? It's an E flat. So then I played an E flat. Now here's the secret, and this answers uh, Metal Melee Master's question. I think I didn't play an E flat dominant seventh chord. I mean, I could have, but here's what it would have sounded like. Ooh, right. So, so it, which works. It's it's just a little more dominant sounding. It's a little more uh, crunchy, maybe sounding. Um, so to make it go down a little smoother, um, I play it as a suspended seventh. So mm-hmm. a suspended seventh. It does have. Um, it does have the dominant seventh interval in there, but I also have the four, and in this case, I had the nine. Doesn't matter, folks, if you don't know what that is, but um, I'm playing a suspended seventh chord instead of a dominant seventh chord, and they both do the same job. They both bring us to a one chord, but they both just sound a little different from each other, but they still serve the same function. We got a couple questions here. So, uh, Neppy asks, are there any uh, scales you would not go to? Like from G, so uh, let's say you wanted to go to F from G. Um, no. I mean, it, it really just, I, I guess, <laughs> what, <laughs> what when, you're modu- <laughs> when you're modulating, when you're, there's no scale he won't <laughs> touch. <laughs> now, for everyone else out there, you're limited to three squ- scales, but Robbie. <laughs> Robbie has mastered them all. No, I mean there are some that I, I definitely am less <laughs> familiar with. Um, but I I play at a, a church, uh, or at least at, up until this shelter in place came to be. Uh, for the last like six or seven years, I've been playing at this church, and a lot of gospel music does, uh, especially with the congregation. Now, this is a great example of of the power of a five seven chord. Okay. When you have you've got a congregation of you know, in my case, twenty five people, but you know. At a, a mega church where you've got like thousands of people um, or hundreds of people, how does everyone that's singing the song know when when the song is going to modulate? And that's right. it. It's a five chord. The band plays a five chord of whatever the next key is, and um, and then that attunes everyone's ears. So I think a traditional modulation uh, or a typical a typical key that you would go to would just be a half step up. That's mm-hmm. usually the the common um, the common modulation. Sometimes you might go up a whole step, but what seems the most natural for us is a half step. And so, in the example of Yoshi's Island map, I was playing in G, mm-hmm. and uh, the five chord of that is D. Right. And so then, if I wanted to get up to G sharp, then I would just simply play a D sharp because that's a fifth away. But that's not to say that um, you can't modulate anywhere. The, the bottom line is just whatever your whatever you want your song to be, and especially if you're working with a band, you need to kind of predetermine what the what the modulation is going to be. Um, but I think a most typical modulation is going up half steps. Here's sort of an example of what that would sound like if I just kept modulating up half steps. Mm. 
So, right. So, so even even when you're playing that five chord, yeah, uh, just to sort of go back to that dissonance, you're not playing a dominant five, or can you just play a yeah, a, it, a major five? Basically, what what I'm playing is a dominant chord, but I'm not playing the three, and and what I'm doing is playing the four instead of the three. Okay. So, so. What the, wh- kind of why, the does quick... that, why does that be, make it a little more like palatable, like a little because, less dissonant? Um, I think the tritone of the three and the seven, uh, mm-hmm. cr- they, they create this tritone, which gives it that crunch. Right. Whereas if you did that suspended sound, it just goes down a little smoother. A spoonful of sugar makes the suspended seventh go to the one. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to demonstrate this other tune. This is a this is a tune, uh, a gospel tune called "Wonderful Is Your Name." And actually, Corey Henry on YouTube, if you look yeah. up "Wonderful Is Your Name," he, he's got this amazing rendition of it on the organ uh, yeah. when he was uh, playing a he was doing a it was basically a memorial service for uh, a pastor that he knew, and so basically. That tune has these wild modulations. It, it, it just totally goes. It, it it goes to the tritone of whatever the thing is. Here, I'm just gonna play it. I play this sometimes, and it's just so fun to to hear. Um, um, see if I can remember it. No. Uh, let's see. constantly resetting our ears are constantly resetting to a new uh a new environment a new Mm -hmm. tonal center like we've got this minor thing going on right and then suddenly now we got this major scale that's totally it's a tritone away it goes to g flat major and then to get us back to c we do a two five in c just it, it, it's constantly it, it doesn't get old because it's constantly um cl- cleansing the palate and it's we're always arriving at something that's very different so nepi asks uh what is a, sus- a suspended seventh again and can you show it on your keys absolutely yeah i was thinking how can people get some use out of this idea here's the voicing that my dad showed me um uh to, to play it in C, here's the way I, I think of it. You're playing a major triad chord, so mm-hmm. a major chord that's a whole step down from what whatever your actual root note is. So okay. if I was to play a C suspended seventh chord, I would play C on the bottom because that's our root for the chord. But instead of playing a C chord up on the top, I would actually just play a B flat major chord because that's a whole step down from our root. It creates a definitely an anticipation. Like it sounds like something's something's gonna happen. Something's about to happen. And that's why in Mario Kart they use that all the time. Or Luigi's Raceway. Perfect example. It goes up chromatically to build even more anticipation and excitement. And where it ends up is on this G7 chord. And so G, that's really setting us up to want to go to a C, which is... We're in the C major scale now. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of a simple way of thinking of how to create a suspended seventh is play a major triad a whole step down. And you could play any inversion of that too. You don't have to play it in the the root position. You could do Yeah. 
So that's there you have it. That's that's the tool you can use to to bring bring yourself anywhere in a song. You you, you could you could switch to any scale by playing a suspended seventh uh, chord like that off the five of the new scale. Yeah. Yeah, when, exactly. And Rainbow Road, uh, mm-hmm. Super Nintendo, it's playing a big suspended seventh sound, gets us excited, and then it becomes sort of not suspended anymore. We have, it becomes more of a dominant, a, a clear dominant chord. Right. More crunchy. Now that's that's kind of interesting because you have that suspended sound, and that's perfectly palatable. Um, mm-hmm. I could listen to an entire song that that does that. In fact, there is what is what's the, there is a jazz tune that's basically just all suspended chords. Um, I would say uh, "Maiden Voyage," Herbie Hancock. He that, that's that's an example at least. Yeah. Uh, I think that's yeah. the one I'm thinking of, and. Yeah. Uh, but but it also kind of want, wants to take you somewhere, you know? Yeah. And it's it's, it's interesting because, like, even here, uh, whenever you hear this, and then you hear that, that kind of dominant sound, mm-hmm. you almost mm-hmm. want to get back to that, yeah. uh, that, that suspended sound that sounds a little bit cleaner. Right, right. That's a great, that's a, that's a great example. I mean... Yeah, yeah, I haven't really analyzed that. I mean, you, you, we could we could expect it to sound like it it's going to go to F basically. Right. Which um what is it? Is it Mario Super Mario World's game over song is So it's right. it's a classic 251. It's doing that same kind of thing. So in that case, it does resolve, but with Rainbow Road, it never resolves because you might always fall off the edge. <laughs> uh, Dingus Dolphin asks, uh, "What was that gospel tune?" I it's think called, he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful is your name. Look that but, one up and, yeah, and um, attach Corey Henry's name to it. In right. If you look up Corey Henry, you'll hear Ooh. this great. Yeah, it's Ooh. insane. It it's is. His, he's just playing a solo uh, organ performance. Well, he's got drums with it, but um, it's just him on organ. He's got the foot pedals going. He's doing chord voicings and all these runs. And he's a madman with the draw bars, too. He can. Oh, he is. He can totally work the, the organ. Um, like this whole, all the draw bars on a Hammond B3, each one makes different harmonic sounds. So, um, he really is able to, uh, to manipulate all of that and get a lot of different sounds. And then Corey Henry, all, all in and of himself, that's a, he's a great, a great fellow to look into. Um, one other tune I, that just came to mind that has that suspended seventh sound is mm-hmm. uh, uh, the results tune on Mario Kart 64. Man, Mario Kart is just all about the suspended. Yeah, so it's it's really just playing that B flat major chord over a C. By the way, folks, if you're just now coming in, um, this is a very open, open discussion. Feel free to ask any questions. Dex doing a great job keeping keeping some eyes on on the chat better than I am. <laughs> but we're uh, feel free to ask anything regarding video game music or especially on the piano. And we're just touching on a lot of different musical concepts and how they're used in video game music. So do you want to go back to uh, some of this uh, Earthbound music? Sure. Yeah, we can hop back to uh, Pollyanna. So, okay. Or I, I could just kind of put a bow on that. Um, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, why don't you start playing something, and then okay. I'm going to stop you. Okay. I'll, I'll just start playing. So what the, kind of the, the TLDR of Pollyanna is it's on all three mother games. Um, the first mother game, it's like a fast thing. Second mother game, it's a slow thing with slightly different arrangement. Uh, it removes a, a section. Um, so when we played it in 
in Motherload for our album, we kept the slow kind of groove that Earthbound had, um, but then we added a backbeat to it and made it this kind of cut time. Yeah, right. And then also, uh, I I was in, wanting to interpret it in a, in a style that maybe Stuff would play. Stuff is is one of my favorite funk bands, and there's actually a particular track by them that almost sounds like it's it's going to be Pollyanna. Um, I would play it on here, but it'll probably mute the VOD, and I don't think that's that's what we're looking to do. Well, I'm not sure, but... You, you, that, you really think that stuff is like in the collection of music that's going to like demonetize? The... <laughs> can, I don't know. Can, can, <laughs> I, can I, you, I, I'm curious how that works. I, me too, actually. Now I kind of want to like play like five seconds of it, kind of like take my chance. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Tell, well, tell, especially tell a little bit your... about, about, about stuff, actually, when you get a sec. Sure, sure. So stuff is a, uh, if anyone's been here for previous uh vgm streams uh educational streams i'm a broken record with stuff i i could just talk about them forever uh they're a band of session players from from new york they all met uh they were all in new york and they all met because they kept getting called to play on the same gigs they were session players so uh a lot of artists in the 70s and into the 80s um like uh, Joe Cocker, Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, all these different uh, artists, they would call these session players because they were just the best of the best of the time on the East Coast. And they all kept meeting up and seeing each other at these um, studio recording dates. And then eventually they realized, that, well, let's just put a little group together. And they called it Stuff. And they would do this residency gig like every Pretty much every night they played at this this um, restaurant club thing called Mikel's. And so they got really good at playing together and, and the synergy was just constantly building. And they're just a, a super group of really top-notch pocket session players. Uh, rhythm and blues, soul, funk, jazz, all of that. And they, uh, they were very popular in Japan as well. So I would imagine... It, it would be hard to 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 think that some of these uh, composers from Japan didn't didn't know about stuff or hadn't heard some of them, uh, some of their recordings. And they they didn't just have a big impact on your music. I, if you've uh, ever listened to like Wolfpack or any modern mm -hmm. funk, there's a lot of uh, Richard T and stuff in uh, in those bands. Absolutely, um, yeah. Wolfpack is kind of like a modern day stuff in, in, a, in a sense like they definitely have a lot of those isms coming into play um anyhow they actually, there's they even have a song called tea time which is like right. a dedicated song right. to richard t right exactly uh and richard t is one of my main inspirations he's the one that sounds like this It's like really funky syncopated stuff and then he's got all these beautiful flourishes uh, like classical um, arpeggios and it's just it's a style with so much character and you feel like you you know him just by listening to him mm -hmm. um anyhow there's a tune that stuff did called um love of mine um and it sounds like this Like, you can hear a similar idea of this descending, walking uh, 
idea that the bass is doing very much like Pollyanna. So that just kind of clicked for me and made total sense to make our rendition of Pollyanna touch on that same kind of a feel, same kind of style. Right. It, it and just as, uh, as Neppy like points out, match. he says, mm-hmm. he says, unlike Pollyanna, sounds like this one doesn't use that spicy minor third and just go straight to the second. Right. It just does a, a basic Good, two goodier. five. Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to point that out too. It's uh, it, it doesn't do the the flat three there. It it just goes to the two, to the five, and then back to our one there. So if you, if you like to hear that tune, it's on YouTube. It's called "Love of Mine" by Stuff, and it's one of the few Stuff tunes that has vocals on it. It's sung by Gordon Edwards, who uh, who uh, doesn't sing that often, but. He <laughs> stuff is mostly an instrumental band, uh, but occasionally they would have some some vocals. It was great to get to meet Gordon Edwards as well on his uh, eighty something. <laughs> I don't know if he'd want me to say his is his birthday uh, last year. Dak was actually sleeping on my couch when I went to go meet <laughs> Gordon <laughs> Edwards, and then I came back, and then Dak was like, "Hey, I think this might be inspired by Richard T." And and then you showed me Tea Time, yeah, and I was like, "Whoa." There it is. And that's about all we can play. That's pretty much it. And that's our (laughs) Pollyanna. So I'll play a little rendition of of that now, kind of melding melding the idea of this love of mine stuff tune with the melody of Pollyanna. Let's see. And we're going to have John Magrum sing it. Okay, John's going to sing the lyrics there. Okay, here we go. Um Yeah, because I I think we all felt what you were about to do. You were about to just play yeah that the, again. the one chord yeah like yeah. normally in the tune it resolves. It's it's a classic two 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 five five one. And you did instead. I did a I I, I did something to make us not go back to the one. Let's see what I did. Um, So what I did here, I went, I made us go not to the one chord, but I made us go to the, the relative minor of that, which is E. I went to the E minor. So I actually stole that idea. It's it's a pretty common trope uh, when, when you're trying to create a, 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 a vamp or a tag, you might call this a tag when you kind of repeat an ending phrase just to kind of make the final, the final finish line of the tune all the more satisfying you just kind of tease that ending a few times uh i stole this idea from stevie wonder's live concert uh he does 
a, a version of people make the world go round and he's got a talk box so he's singing the melody with a talk box which is the like this uh tube that goes in his mouth and and he can and the sound shoots through this rubber tube the sound of his keyboard goes into his mouth and he can shape the sound the, mm-hmm. the, the con- and he, he can make different vowel sounds with it. Like, like a vocoder. Like a vocoder in a sense, yeah. yeah. It's got kind of a similar sound. Anyway, they end that tune with a similar turnaround. Um, but what we did here... So now I'm going to try to get us... To the E minor, my, my new destination is to get to E minor. And right so now you're you're playing an A minor. I'm on an A minor chord. right now. Okay. Because normally what would happen is we would expect E A minor to the D dominant seventh, which is the five chord, and then down to the one chord. And so 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 that run that run right before that is like. So that's right. a C major, and then mm-hmm. sort like of a, a G chord a G over B, over B, and then that A. Yeah, it's actually the same thing as the Bacchano uh, chorus kind of thing. It also sounds like Room Three Thirty Five uh, or Peg by Steely Dan. Yeah. Okay, so how are, how are you getting from that A minor to that E minor? Yeah, to the E minor. So that's a really good question. As as long, as soon as you have a destination, if you want to get to an E minor, right? A great, and this is coming full circle. What what have we talked about in the past here today? How do we get somewhere? We use the five of it. Right. One, two, three, four, five. So I play a B dominant chord because that's going to create expectation and our ears are going to sound or our ears are going to think oh logically it should go to the E. So what I do is once I'm on the A minor chord I go to a B dominant chord Da-da, E minor Now there there's a reason why that sounds so smooth mm-hmm. I, and is it because you're like right before the phrase is C B A, but normally when you're playing that that B, yeah, it's actually a, a G major chord. But instead, right, right. you're still coming back up mm-hmm. as if you're going to go back up to that C. But instead of playing that G major, you're mm-hmm. playing that right, right. Absolutely. So there's already been sort of a, an expectation set to go to a B something or other chord. And then right. we're just tweaking that chord to be a dominant, which then propels us elsewhere. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, do you want to play that, that, whole, that whole section sure, for I'll, us Sure, I'll again? play that little ending there. Yeah. Yeah. So... The classic bomb ending. That's how you can... If you ever want to learn how to end any song... Any, any, here, here, I'll, I'll give you this one for free. Here's a pro right. tip right here. This is a Guab's life hack right here. At any point, any song that you're playing, just do this. As loud as possible. Case in point, here, here's an example. No man, beautiful song. Yeah, it's going on a little longer. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's, that, 
my, my laptop actually just went out. Uh, it ran out of battery really quick. I'm going to grab the, the power supply. Dak, can you hold down the fort for a sec? I got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dak's going to play a little Dak t- tales or, or <laughs> I'll be right back, folks. That's a, that's that's pretty cool. So I mean that was definitely something that I didn't know. Oh, that sounds so great. Right, so do we have any questions in the chat right now or anything that you might want to hear uh we can analyze a song for you we got we got quite a long time left i think we have about an hour left so yeah uh now is a good time to sort of uh start switching gears since we've clearly exhausted everything in Pollyanna. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> there's nothing got- left to talk about we're all experts now Yes. Actually, yeah, there, there's plenty of uh, tracks on Motherload that, that we could talk about, or anything, really. Feel free to uh, derail the conversation as much as you'd like. It, it's, it's been derailed many times already. Well, give me, give me a quick jam, and let's wait for uh, somebody in chat. We'll give them a, a minute okay. here to suggest sure. a song. Uh, why don't you just jam on something for a little bit? Here. Yeah. Who can name what game this is from? Come on, this is an easy one. Ooh, okay, we got a we got a good suggestion here. How about yeah. some banjo kazooie? Banjo kazooie. Now this is a great example of um oops. This is a tune where uh where modulations happen a lot and, and keeps us um, wondering what's going to happen. So one of my favorites is um, Treasure Trove Cove. So I'll play it a little bit and then we can see what's happening here. Um, cool. I'll bring it down here. So that one, it, 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 it hops through a number of different keys, and it takes and us there. We just got a really uh, pertinent question, actually. Uh, that Gamer Girl says, Is there any song in VGM that, by all of the rules of music, should not work, but somehow really does? And I feel like this is kind of a perfect example of yeah, something yeah. that definitely strays away from like mm-hmm. typical rules of like composition. Yeah. Sure, about sure. that. Yeah, I mean, this tune, uh, I'll have to think on, like, what what, what, what would be a better example uh, other than this tune. But this, this is a good one where it sets, it sets an expectation. We're in this uh, C major sound, all white keys, and then it goes up momentarily up a half step. You get this kind of like this kind of like Spanish key thing mm-hmm. going on, um, matador. But um, then it even gets a little bit crazier in like right. the B section, right? Yeah. So, so then uh, I'll play through that a little bit. So after all. 
all of that, then it moves to the four. This is a pretty common idea in composition, going to the four chord for like a bridge. It, get, it brings our ears to something different. But then immediately it goes, and then, Okay, so that, that took our ears a few different directions, and what it really did was it played through the circle of fifths. If anyone's familiar with the circle of fifths, or if you're not, just Google that. It's, it's a circle, and every note is a perfect fifth interval away. So um, intervals being notes that are apart from each other, the interval of this note to this note, if it's, if it's a perfect fifth interval, it'll sound like this. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. So it, it, and that sounds very natural to us because in music, oftentimes we're playing a five chord that's bringing us to a one chord. So it's sort of an unspoken expectation that we have when we hear a chord, uh, a major chord, especially a dominant chord, that it's going to be followed by a chord that's a fifth away from it. And so that's why, you know, why we use that chord for uh, modulating or bringing us to a different key. So during that little point there, it goes to the F major and then it goes. So there it goes from F down to B flat, which is a perfect fifth. Da, da. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Sounds pretty natural to me. Logical, I could expect that. There it is. So it does that, but then it goes one more. <laughs> it goes. It's like, and then, oh, we do it again. <laughs> and then how we do it again. How deep can we get? Right, how far can we go? <laughs> and then, oh, no. and then again. <laughs> right. So it's literally playing the same phrase, but playing it in a circle of fifths, and it's consistent that way so that our ears can follow it. And um, so it seems kind of like rambunctious and crazy and, and unexpected, but it's still it still goes down smooth. Like it, it's not like swallowing a horse pill. It, it's like an actual, it, it sounds normal. We can follow along like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the ride. And then here, the melody is outlining an F dominant chord. F major chord, which is now setting expectation. If we're playing an F chord, that's going to take us to our to our B flat. Right. This would, yeah. So an F dominant chord that's going to propel our ears to expect a B flat as our new our new tonic, our new home, and that's what it does. So it plays from there. Now we're in B flat. And the whole the whole same melody and chord progression plays out, but now in a in a, in a modulated scale. Right, right, exactly. So, uh, uh, Nepi asks a really good question here. This is a good example of going down the circle of fifths. Can you compare that with the feeling of going up the circle of fifths? <clears throat> well, yeah. So. The way it works is if you go it's, through the circle of fifths, if you go the opposite direction, now you're going perfect fourths. Yeah, you're going yeah. you're going with the fourths. So it's mm -hmm. like, and you're still kind of. It, it, it's really debatable at that point whether you're going up or down or which direction, because right. like you're right. going down the fourths. Mm -hmm. Is, it, is mm -hmm. it fair to say the, in music you can only go down? There is no going yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's right. It's constantly. <laughs> It's constantly uh, resolving. So th that's a good question, though. Like the idea here, I think I think folks at home can visually see this. A G, okay. 
In the key of C major, C is our home. That's our tonic. That's sort of our fulcrum point against which all other notes are going to be um, judged. <laughs> We're going to hear dissonance and, and resolution all in relation to how far these notes are from C. Whether or not we know it, our ears are... This is our fulcrum point against which all other notes, all harmonies, everything are going to be interpreted. So if we play a five of that, which is G, um, a perfect fifth down is C. So if we play a G, we're going to hear that fifth going down, or we, we want to hear that fifth going down. However, we could also play C higher which is now a fourth. So the idea is G always follows, or G always leads us to C, or it wants to lead us to C, but we don't have to play the C below it. We could play the C above it, which then technically is a fourth higher. But the idea is that it's still a fifth down or a fourth right. up. So if we were to say what, uh, what Paul was saying, Palo Alto Paul, which, by the way, shout out to Palo Alto Paul. He gifted me a, that acoustic piano that I've got, the, the stand-up the oh, upright piano. no kidding. Piano. Yeah, yeah. Yo, he, we played for his awesome. wedding. Yeah, we played for Paul's wedding. Um, in fact, this last week was Paul and Carlin's uh, wedding anniversary. But nice. Super Soul Bros played for their wedding. And then Paul, he's just been a, a good buddy and a, a longtime fan ever since. And basically, he, he had a piano to give me so Dak next time you come over you'll get to tickle the Palo Alto Paul Ivories all right all right <laughs> so the idea of playing a fifth higher um essentially that's actually playing a fourth down right so this is what we call a plagal cadence when you play a four chord going to a one chord so if we go from G to D, I mean, it just sounds like you're starting Pachelbel's Canon at that point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Right, um, but if I were to play that in the key of C, so here's our here's our tonal center. So you get this different kind of resolution. It's a plagal cadence. Um, at least that's what they call it. <laughs> and going from the four chord to the one chord. That's what, uh, like the hallelujah. A four to a one chord. It's still, it's still a way to resolve to the one chord, but it just feels different than... Then right. the perfect cadence of the five going to a one. Right. All right, we got another question here. So my boy Triple M says, can you break down Grant Kirkhope's approach to boss battle remixes for his stage themes? Because it feels iconic. Wow, that's a good question. I probably would be pulling stuff out of my butt to, to answer that right now because um, I need to listen. I, I actually have been wanting to play Banjo-Kazooie again and DK64. Um mm -hmm. But basically, I, I want to uh, I want to revisit those, and once once I get that stuff uh, simmering in, in in the noggin, I, I I'll be able to respond to that. So Maybe I guess you'll just have to come back to you'll the just next have to come back to the next stream. one. Yeah, <laughs> which <laughs> you know, in all the ropes. So now that's how we hook them in. <laughs> that's how you hook them in. This actually might be a good uh, a good time for you to do a little plug there, Dak. You're um. So you you work for Magfest. I do work for Magfest as on, is on the t-shirt. Um, as on the t-shirt, there it is. And and uh, you designed that shirt too. That's the that's well, the DK. Actually, actually, uh, this was designed by our lovely friends at Fangamer. Really, um, Fangamer made that shirt. Wow! I, mean, I came up with the concept of just s stealing the Donkey Kong uh, font. That was a that was my contribution, and then they designed all <laughs> of the loveliness around it. Wow! Uh, so so shout outs to Fangamer. That's um, right. It, it feels like uh, it feels like we're patting ourselves on the back since we're 
on the fan gamer stream right now but i'm not <laughs> i'm not affiliated with them i'm just a guest here on their stream and they are it's, it's absolutely full circle. phenomenal it's 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 their oh their merch is just so good my favorite piece of merch is they have this katamari damasi uh uh big duffel bag that's like the prince's head it's that's what sold me. I was like, oh, that's well, right. Fan, fan gamers, the one that's that <laughs> they're the one. There's no um, other. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I work at MAGFest and uh, we uh, are also going to be having some uh, educational and entertaining uh, music streams uh, that are going on on Twitch TV uh, slash MAGFest. I believe we're going to have one tomorrow. This is unannounced, but here we go. We're mm. going to announce it here. Here it we're goes. Have we're going to have a uh, stream, a Q&A session with 8-Bit Music Theory. Uh, nice. So definitely join in tomorrow. Uh, that dude is a wealth of knowledge and yes. type. Coolest yes. guy in the world. So you're not going to want to miss that. I, I um, won't miss it myself. Yeah. 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 You should You should stop in. You know, say I, hi. I totally want to. Yeah, definitely. Ben uh, bring Kidd. His, bring the cereal. Yeah, Ben <laughs> Kidd. <laughs> Oh man, he's the king of the crunchy notes. He just, oh yeah, he knows he knows really what's mm. mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, but ben, yeah yeah yeah. To, go ahead. I think tomorrow. Uh, I think it's probably going to be around nine p.m. Eastern, so it's going to be a late night Friday night stream. It's going to be some good stuff. Okay. So definitely stop in twitch.tv slash magfest. Right on, and I think isn't there sort of an, a a branding of of this new online stream content that Magfest is doing? Yeah, we're calling it Mag TV. At least that's the uh, that's that's what we're running with right now. Also, uh, Fan Gamer just uh, dropped a link to that particular uh, Katamari bag that was uh, designed by a good friend, uh, Laura Verdon, who who did all, like all all kinds of Magfest merch as well. She's an unbelievably amazing designer. And, yes. Uh, definitely go check that out it's my favorite piece of merch i have ever gotten anywhere it's so cool <laughs> and uh that laura is also on the uh the list the the growing list of uh people whose weddings we've performed for we played nice. for laura and charlie's wedding yeah oh no way that's awesome <laughs> yeah oh they're so great that's so cool yeah, I guess uh, that might be a plug moment. If anyone's interested in Super Soul Bros playing for your wedding, uh, if your wedding is is going to be during a time where we can actually congregate um, and, and get together, Super Soul Bros is available for all that stuff too. Um, but essentially, yeah, Dak's been uh, working with MAGFest and helping create... He, he is the ideas guy. I would say he's a major part of the ideas of, of MAG's latest uh, undertakings. And um, and so they'll be doing more educational, informative video game music analysis uh, streams. And we were just talking before this stream about how Dak wants to do the w wait, what's that or stop, what's that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, we need we need a good name for that. Everybody in the chat. So I have this good idea, this great idea, amazing idea, where mm. we get Robbie on the stream and uh, he just plays something and. Uh, at some point, he's gonna play something that's gonna like blow our minds or really confuse us, and I want to <laughs> stop him. And I and I need a catchphrase that's like, okay, right there, what's that? So everybody, give me give me your ideas for what a good name yeah. for that for the show would be. Like right there, <laughs> what's that? Because right that's there. what I that's what I want to like hit like a like a the record scratch sound effect. Be like. Yeah. you know right there <laughs> what was that and then robbie has to go back and uh <laughs> and, and elaborate so w what are some of our options uh, there we go uh, ho hold it <laughs> no. hold, oh, hold up it. stop right there wait yeah. <laughs> wow <laughs> glob stoppers glob stoppers <laughs> <laughs> there it is <laughs> Oh my god! That's it. That's it. That's oh, it. That's, that's the one. That's the one. Somebody give this man a sub. Yeah, Blob man. Stoppers. You, wow. I'm I'm surprised you didn't think of that one, Dak. You're you're that's, Mr. That's, Branding. That's wow. so beautiful. Oh man. Okay, that's it. It's Guav Stoppers. That's, <laughs> that lets end the stream. We're not going anywhere from that. But I guess uh, right. to to bring it full circle, I uh, I could definitely get into uh, Kirk Hope's 
ba- boss battle music and and chew on that a bit, and then we could comment on that maybe on a fan gamer stream and or a Super Soul Bros stream and or a Mag TV stream. So give give all those things a follow if you haven't already. Give Fan Gamer a follow. Give Super Soul Bros a follow, and give Magfest a follow. Um, yes. And then you'll you'll be aware of all these things happening. And I can't I can't vouch enough for tomorrow's stream. Uh, just hearing the the description of of Eight Bit Big Ben. Uh, his name's Ben Kid, but I call him Eight Bit yeah. Big Ben because yeah. he's a he's he's a big guy too. He, he is. He, do, he dwarfs. Dude. He was helping us load a bunch of keyboards into Magwest, and and he was dwarfing all of them. He's just <laughs> tall dude, oh, but he's man. a very knowledgeable guy. He he runs the Eight uh, Bit Music Theory YouTube channel. Um, let's see here. I, I'm gonna circle through the uh, the chat a little bit. Let's get some John Cage VGM up in here. <laughs> um, here, I, I'll just pick a, another Earthbound tune, and we can start talking on that. And you can glob stop me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> that's it. I hope, Alex, I hope you're cool with us using that, because that's totally 100% going to be it. By the way, just a quick clarification. Laura made the, the shirt, and uh, Audrey Wayner made the... Uh, the uh the duffel bag which i would love to show you guys it's so good um or check it out on their site yeah yeah let's see all Hmm. right here i'm gonna pick one sure 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 let's do uh let's see let let me let me find uh earlier i was playing a little uh a track Oh, okay. I mean, feel free to pull yeah, something no. else up too. That's good. And I, 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 I got, I got, I want to stop you. Well, play through that a little bit. And what track is that bit. again? It's called uh, on on Motherload. It's Ness's Nightmare, and that features Mega Ran uh, doing doing a rap on there. So and that's uh, that's like, is that the battle theme? It's one of the battle themes. I think it's called mm-hmm. Battle uh, or Fight Against a uh, a weird enemy or, or a, a, some sort of an odd enemy yeah i just think of it as antoid like when you when you fight the ants mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this one yeah Mega Man. So that's a difficult tune to play. I, I yeah, botch it. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's talk about. Well, you know what's interesting is I don't think anyone would ever be able to tell if you hit a wrong note in that song because <laughs> that song is so intentionally dissonant. You yeah. Know? Absolutely. So play that first chord. Just sure, the very sure. first. I'll bring it. Okay. Here. So what do we got there? Okay. It's pretty much a a, a vanilla G dominant seventh chord. Yeah. In yeah in an inversion. And now and now give me the next chord. Now this okay. is my interpretation of it. I, I can't say that this is really what is sure, in the original, sure. but let's see. So I'm, I'm actually just walking down the G dominant scale. Okay. That's to say all white keys. And then. Okay. Now there <laughs> we go. So what's going on there? What is going on here? Mm. <laughs> We got like this Phrygian kind of action going on where like we're still hanging in G. The, the idea is the tune. Here, here's sort of the, the blanket foundation of the tune. It's G, 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 G. And then down a half step. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun. And now back to the G. Dun, 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 da, da, dun, dun. And down a half step to G flat. Dun, 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 dun. So that's sort of the the A section of the tune. It's just hanging on G and then down to G flat. So, so we, while we, it's on we, G, 
we, yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. a little bit about those those dominant chords before and how their purpose is usually to lead you somewhere and give you resolution yeah but that's not really what's happening here right right you're you're totally right it could i mean <laughs> he could have done <laughs> and that's how and, and that's then how, and that's even <laughs> Okay, that time it works. <laughs> but I like that that's just, that's Ness's happy ending right there. Right. He's like, oh, we, we we actually beat the whole game. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're right. So the function of a dominant chord is to create anticipation and maybe some, some sort of dissonance. Um, something's got to happen. It, you don't want to like stay in this little zone here. But while it, it, it just lingers on that chord for this particular mm -hmm. tune. And that's its function in, in this tune is to just create expectation and uh, be dissonant and be kind of weird because it's it's the song that plays when you're fighting a, an odd opponent. Um, like some of the, the the hypnotized characters that you meet or um, or like the, the weird possessed little critters that you fight. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's hanging out on G dominant. But then here, yeah, just what are for we a moment, on there. so the, I, I may have interpreted these notes. I may have added these in. Again, an important thing with music is it's a sandwich. <laughs> God, just, <laughs> and that's the end of that explanation. <laughs> if there's one thing everybody from the chat takes away, it's that music is a sandwich. <laughs> And there you go. Right. But here's sort of a vi <laughs> here's a visual example of that where the bass, uh, no pun intended, the bassist, the bass's job is to hold the foundation. It's the foundation. It's the base of the music. It's the bottom right. slice of bread. And then on top, you've got the melody. Um, so the top slice of bread is the melody. And okay. that's always, that's, that's moving around too. So you got... So if I play just those two elements, just the the bass notes and the melody, you you can tell what the tune is, or at least it, it sounds it sounds close enough. Right. All the all the filling, the stuff in between is missing, but you could still, I guess it's still a sandwich if it's two slices of bread. <laughs> but uh, but the stuff that you put in between is kind of all open for for interpretation, and. Um, and so with a lot of 8-bit music, since 8-bit music usually had four sound channels. One was for noise, which was like percussion or drum sounds. So now you're down to three channels uh, that can only play one note at a time. So you've got harmonies that can happen. You've got bass, you've got melody on the top, and then in the middle, the middle is um, providing some harmonic enrichment to, to make the tune sound uh, a little more interesting. And with 8-bit music, since there were only three notes happening at a time, um, there's a lot of room for interpretation. Now, Earthbound wasn't 8-bit music, but it was um, It was also kind of limited. And so I think just the way I interpreted making this sandwich, I just added some of these other harmonies, which might have been in the original tune. I, I'd have to really do a side-by-side -side comparison. But, yeah... Yeah, so that part right there, I guess we have like a moment of, we have like a flat nine happening and like a sharp five. So basically a very altered dominant seventh chord. We're still playing a G dominant seventh chord, but we're also, um, oh, and the 11's in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just a very, uh, it's kind of got like a Phrygian sound going on, but dissonant, extra dissonant. This is vanilla dissonant, but then here it's like, oh, that's dark chocolate. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bitter, a little different. Um, and then here oh. we've got uh, another sharp five, a thirteen, another flat nine, and then here's the three. Yeah. So 
So that's that's kind of the whole first section of the G dominant thing. All of it is still G dominant chords, but some of those G dominant chords we're adding, we're sprinkling in some of that dissonant seasoning, some of that um, Worcestershire sauce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, and then from there, it goes down a half step. Um, now, are you playing? Are you playing basically the same thing except just down a half step? The first three chords, I am. Uh, actually, a little bit different. I I would have to really we'd have to analyze this and go down a little bit of a rabbit hole and get kind of extra technical with it. Um, Here's, the, here's an important one that I like, right here. Um, so here we've got, what do we have? This is a... Because in the melody, all it does is this. Yeah. Da, so now... Very, very dissonant. Like, kind of, maybe one of the most dissonant ones. Yeah, what are the actual notes you're playing there? Uh, F on the right hand, I'm playing F, A, B, and E. A or A flat? Uh, A, natural. Actually, no, you're right. Like, sometimes I'll play it A flat, sometimes A. Yeah. <laughs> you can just add them both. Yeah, yeah. Make it extra. <laughs> yeah. Extra juice. Well, so. You know what's interesting about yeah. about that that chord is all your do- see like all of music is basically relative and that's that last note or that's that last chord that you're playing before you return back to right. that dominant chord and mm-hmm. so that's almost like an extra extra dominant chord because you're adding so much grossness and so mm-hmm. much spiciness to it mm-hmm. that whenever you resolve back to just that like that that actual dominant chord you're like yeah. oh thank god it right. doesn't it, sound like garbage anymore right exactly at least it's it, it's still <laughs> it's the lesser of two dissonances it, exactly yeah mm-hmm. absolutely good point I, I was gonna i was thinking that too like how it just goes right back to a, a vanilla g dominant chord mm-hmm. so the whole thing is like which g dominant feels so palatable yeah now now how about this take that 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 standard g dominant chord and mm-hmm. put it into uh let's say like a uh uh, something in C where you're just using it as a dominant to get back to C and sure, we'll sure. the difference about how that one actually feels spicy compared yeah. to the standard C. Sure, sure. Okay, so So it, it in that moment there it yeah. sounds very logical and, and, and our ears uh, are happy to hear that dissonance there because it, it's resolving to our one chord, right? Yeah, <laughs> there it is. And um, but I was just thinking about this. Um, if anyone's seen uh, Friday the Thirteenth, or um, you know, like <clears throat> I forget the, I think it's like Frederick or Friedkin. Uh, Something it, he's the composer of the Friday the Thirteenth soundtrack, and I used to listen to that uh, during Halloween time all the time. It's a very, very exciting soundtrack. Um, and there's some moments where it's just playing a, a dominant chord, and I was thinking like, why does it sound so menacing? That's got to be a really weird chord. And then as soon as I, fi- I I tried playing it, I was like, oh, it's just a dominant chord. So I think if you play a dominant chord in a vacuum. In other words, without the context of all the stuff before and after it, it's just kind of a unnerving chord. Um, yeah, um, exactly, exactly. I think there's specifically, there are some points in like Ocarina of Time where when you're in some temples, there are just these lingering dominant chords. Mm-hmm. And they, they kind of just simmer there. They're, it's not like in your face, but it's just an underlying dominant chord like... Um. 
and, and you know that's just giving you a little bit of tension and and yeah. you want it to go somewhere and that's yeah. why why this like earthbound song is so interesting by the way i'm i'm having a laugh at this chat right now i, mm-hmm. I i'm just catching up and <laughs> they're talking about your musical sandwiches uh, and they started ooh you know a dark chocolate sandwich and and then and then you started getting a little spicier and it uh it became a dark chocolate and worcestershire sauce sandwich <laughs> And, it's getting dark eating real is, fast. Yeah, he says this is this is the wrong stream. This has become dark eating. <laughs> it tr- truly <laughs> is dark eating. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go back to let's go back to that the Earthbound song, which is sure. starting on that kind of really lingering mm-hmm. like right. And yeah, and, and how that's how that's wrapping the whole way around. Yeah, we're kind of getting this. Um, yeah, it 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 hangs there, but it it doesn't just hold on that chord. It it plays some other extensions of the chord, and you kind of get this get sort of a mel- melodic idea. Um, so again, the sandwich, whatever the highest note is that's being played at any given time. That's going to be the top slice of bread, and that's what is the melody. That's what we're gonna, our ears are going to hear that more than any of the other notes below it. We're all we're always going to our ears are going to gravitate to the top note. So when we play, what we're hearing is, and so um, we're getting this melodic idea. Yeah, I love how angular this song is. It, it yeah. just it just throws so many little stank notes. But um, harmonizing that melody, I'm just playing these chords, these harmonies underneath, and. Now, look at my my hand here. I'm going to try to play this. Um, you'll notice that the, the chords that we're playing, there's one note that's kind of farther away from the middle two notes. The middle two notes are very close together and crunchy. And then the, the highest note is skipping away. So it's kind of like a, you got two crunchy middle notes and then two outliers on the bottom and top. And that pretty much... I, I, I try to maintain that the whole time because that gives you a very crunchy sound, especially like, you know, as compared to this. That sounds a little more spread out, maybe something like this. That's a that's the same chord that I'm playing, but it's a little more open. Whereas you get this crunch. Uh, it's a little more kind of funky and and a little right. more uh, yeah. So I keep that same idea going with all of these chord voicings. The only one that kind of changes in shape is that last one. It's a little more spread out. Yeah, but. You get this consistency. I think there's that's a really interesting idea. Uh, something to say is how music, our ears really latch onto music. Uh, we, we we find patterns, and so if there's a, a consistency with like what shape the chord is that we're listening to, we can hear how there's. We might not be able to really pick this out, but our ears can hear some similarity of these chords having kind of a similar shape the whole time two close right. middle notes and then these outer farther away notes mm-hmm. and just little uh little things like that that are consistent or create a pattern or expectation that's what makes music uh more listenable and and go down more smoothly i guess well cool let's there was a- uh let's 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 look at another song here sure uh, sure uh, any any suggestions for uh, maybe Earthbound or really any other music in chat, and we'll uh, we'll get to it. Um, and in the meantime, why don't you why don't you jam on that song a little bit? Yeah, I've been really enjoying playing that with, um, especially this kind of a beat here. Ooh, okay, we got one. Okay, uh, here we go. 
Ooh, I like that. The battle music when you fight the new age neo hippie. Okay. Let's see. So that's. Is that right? Is that. What is that, banjo? Or no, what? actually, no, that's. I, you know what? That might be the same tune. Um, is, that, so the, is that from Earthbound? That's an Earthbound, and I think that might actually be the same. Uh, could you actually, Alex, could you post that in the chat? Send a link of, of the tune you're talking about. In the meantime, Dapper uh, wants to know if there's anything from Undertale that we could check out, which is interesting because mm -hmm. Undertale was like greatly inspired by Earthbound. I feel right. like they're cousins at this point. Right, absolutely. Uh, Toby Fox, um, I think he, he cut a lot of his teeth um, learning coding and uh, doing stuff when he was part of the PK Hack group, which is what Starmen... .net had they had this PK hack group where people would reverse engineer the code for Earthbound and make their own little hacked versions of Earthbound. And I think Toby did a lot of that. What's your favorite uh, Undertale song, Robbie? You know what? I I'm I'm bad. Uh, I haven't played the game, <laughs> so That's... my cop out answer is under is a uh, Megalovania. <laughs> I mean, that's a. I still good, love it though. It's a good. It's a good song, and it's yeah. overplayed, and it's terrible, but we all love it, and it's great. So, that's <laughs> yes, totally my, fair. My um, favorite tune from Undertale is Michael Jackson's "I'm Bad." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great one for sure. Uh, all right, so here, here we go. I just found oh, the uh, the link there. I just. Uh, oops! Wait, hold on. No, that was me. I, I was playing okay. our our audio. Yeah, don't worry about that. I thought that was. Here we go. Oh wait, you're also doing it. I'm do here. Now we've got, got the perfect here. echo. We can do it. Perfect. This is this is great. <laughs> we can we can battle. Great call. This this is a good little tune. Now now that I know how it goes, this is just a blues. This is a blues. Um, if anyone's familiar with the twelve bar blues, it's a it's a standard f musical form. It's twelve bars. That means twelve measures. Um, so we've got <clears throat> in blues you've got the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. What what key was that in there? Um, oh, we're getting raided! Drum oh, we're getting raided! Party! Of Holy 29. cow! Hey, it Doug Perry's in the house. Pallets. It's it's Boy raining. Howdy. Boy howdies! Thanks, Drum Ultima, for, for hopping in here. You could probably ask some really good questions. What's going on, Doug? Oh, man, what a great raid. Is this Woo! Gwobs? This is Woo! the Gwobs. Yeah, we're doing, a, we're doing a, a educational, we're trying to analyze video game music, and Drum mm -hmm. Ultima, in and of himself, is a ridiculous musician. Uh, unreasonable, if I were to say. And that's, a, that's, that's the yep. best compliment I can make. An unreasonable musician. <laughs> Uh, he plays vibes. He plays drums. He's he's a multi instrumentalist. He Does runs. He puts. He, he basically makes Disco Cactus happen. And Disco Cactus is a huge experience to uh, to check out. They played at Magfest earlier uh, this year, and I best, think all that best stuff's... show at Magfest. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm allowed to like legally claim that too. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> the best show. <laughs> it really, yeah, it really was, oh, and uh, so good. Super Soul Bros. We were we were backstage while they were playing, and we got we got to listen to the whole thing. It was just amazing. Me, me, yeah. and uh, and Ben Kid and uh, and Smart Game Piano and a bunch of people were right front stage for that disco cactus show it was yeah and ben kid is tall and he didn't give a he didn't give a gosh <laughs> darn because he was like i'm not moving i will stay in this front row oh it was so good oh man ben yeah exactly down in front ben kid we call him yeah. ben ben down in front kid <laughs> eight bit big down in front big kid <laughs> the, the, the eight bit big kid <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but, uh, we're talking, yeah, so we're talking about music here. We were talking about the, the retro hippie um, tune in Earthbound, which is essentially, mm -hmm. a, a, it's like a 12-bar blues. I actually, it might it might have an extra phrase in there. I'm going to give it a, another quick listen, actually. I'm going to pull it up on here so we've got some clean 
clean audio. But if anyone's familiar or not familiar with uh, with the twelve bar blues, it's a it's a musical progression. It's a it's a f- musical form. It's twelve measures long, and you've got the one chord, and then you might do the quick change to the four, and then back to the one, two, three, four. And then you go to the four chord. This is measure five here. Five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three. Here's the last four measures here. We go to the five. five uh, nine, two, three, four, ten, two, three, four, eleven, two, three, four, twelve. Here's the the last measure of the form. And and who to thunk it? We go to the five chord because that's gonna very elegantly propel us back to the one chord. It's like there's a theme going on today. Yeah, there, there seems to be some phenomenon of this five going to the one. Um, I'm going to pull this up really quick here. It's an A. Okay. Yeah, it's 12 bars. But the first four bars are the hits. Here it Okay, so now we're on one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six. Back to the one chord, da, da, and the five here, da, 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 four. Back to the one, and then the five, one, four, one, one. Going to the four chord for a couple bars, da, 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 one chord for a couple bars. And then the five chord, then the four chord, Gotta then the be one. Good. Yeah, so this is great. This is a great example of, of a, a 12 bar blues, and um, you got. It's in the key of A, so it might be a little more uh, nuanced to, to, to kind of pick up. But here's our one chord, here's our four chord, and here's our five chord. So the tune is going like do 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 one 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 four 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 one 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 four 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 and da 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 one 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 da 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 five da 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 four da 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 one 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 five. So on that that second phrase of the tune, it doesn't go to the four. It doesn't do the quick change, but it's it's all blues essentially. Mm-hmm. You got this driving eighth note kind of bass going on too. So, yeah. L- lots, can you think of any other? Uh, can you think of any other VGM that uses a pretty standard twelve-bar blues kind of kind of thing? Or can anybody in chat? Yeah, Doug. drum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drum ultimate might be able to yeah. uh, let us know. <laughs> Jer says Johnny C bad. Johnny uh, C bad. Yeah, which <laughs> one you know, step up from Johnny B good? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. How do you compensate for the fact that there's no blue note in a keyboard tuned for equal temperament? <laughs> wow, that, that's a that's a that's definitely a uh, a high highbrow question. I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Adam, that's an Adam Neely question. Adam That'll Neely be on question. Next week's stream. So, yeah, we got we. I still got to call Adam Neely. See if he if he can uh, hop in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the OG Doom half soundtrack. Interesting. The fam's all together. Yeah, so right. folks, we're we're taking um we're basically taking questions, suggestions, uh little thought processes. We're we're going down different rabbit holes of analyzing different uh video game music. Yeah, Jer, what is your favorite earthbound song? That's what I want to know right now. Jer's in chat. Let's let's Got see Jer. what Let's see what he, he's got to say. Jer of uh, the infamous VG Lead Sheets. That's which right. Is the, Jer- the greatest site in the whole world. Oh, it's so good. 
This is they are making actually, the video game real book. It's that's right. Mm. So, folks, uh, in fact, Jer, can you put that in the chat? Put put the link to VG lead sheets. We use those. Super Soul Bros uses the VG lead sheets. A huge fan of Pollyanna. We spent a good amount of time on that one. As well I think as we did the hotel hotel. song on the on the other stream, but we didn't do it on this one. Yeah, and that's yeah. a that's a very that's a much different song. So let's let's look into that. Oh yeah. Mm. So right off the bat, this has a totally different feel than so many other songs. Can you tell us why? There's a lot of things going on rhythmically. Yeah. There, there, you've got this. Um, well, actually, a lot of the tunes we've been touching on, um, at least the last tune we did, it had a swung feel of like... Mm -hmm. Which is a very... It's sort of a jazzy kind of thing. Right, it's, it's a swung feel. Instead of it being... Straight beats, it's... Um, so the hotel song. Hotel tune is straight. It's 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 straight beats. If, if I were to swing that, it would be like, and it immediately gets jazzy. Yeah. So so if anybody in the chat was wondering what the secret to jazz is, it's simply just swinging, swinging, swinging the notes. That's it. <laughs> Oh, Fangamer's got a good uh, question, too. We can get into that after this. Uh, okay. Buy something, will you? That's a great okay. one. Oh, yeah. um, also, it's in a minor key. So, hotel mm -hmm. is minor. Okay, so we've got a minor key. Here's our home. Kind, this kind of feels like a like a Spanish like tango yeah. kind of thing. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's got a lot of Latin vibe there. Makes me want to get up and you know, dance. Right. So it's also, uh, it, it's minor and it goes to the four here. We got. Go to the four chord. Dun, 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 dun. My D key is, is intermittent right now. I got you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll synchronize. <laughs> Okay, right there. At the end okay, of that yeah. phrase, we so go what's going here. On there? Okay, so the melody goes to F, which is pretty dissonant. That's like our flat nine of this chord. What's really happening? Remember, the home of this, the the home away from home, the hotel home is A minor. That's our home. So the five of that is going to be a, a pretty pretty reliable way to get us back home back to the hotel key a so e that's what happens at the end of the phrase we go mm. e that makes us that makes us want the a chord mm -hmm. do, 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 do. yeah so and and it's truly a uh, an E dominant chord, so very much propelling us dominant chord. And then in the melody, especially, it goes. Da, da. We have this dissonance, and then down to to E. So this is like dissonant, and right. then resolved in in and of itself within the chord. And <clears throat> that's some, that's what we would call an altered seven chord so okay. so in other words let's just think of it as a dark eating dominant chord it, it, it's got it's got a lot of weird flavors in there that are outside of the scale they're being bent kind of out of shape nothing is as it should be um very dissonant and it, usually it, go ahead yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of the thought that we were talking about earlier about the relativity of these chords and you're adding that sort of extra dissonance because you know, when you're going back to that A, you're not playing in like a happy A major. You're mm -hmm. playing this kind of sad, less palatable A minor. And so adding that extra dissonance up here. Right. Kind of makes that A a little more, uh, 
feel a little more cozy, a little more. Yeah, safe. it's it's the it, exactly exactly. Relatively, it sounds it sounds a lot more pleasing. Right. Which is a similar thing as to what happened in what, what's, what's what's the battle theme called again? Uh, we'll just call it battle yeah. theme. <laughs> battle theme, <laughs> which is like the same kind of thing that was going on. In like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got a lot of dissonance in there, but but then when it goes back to the 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 beginning of the phrase, back to the G dominant, yeah. even though that chord in a vacuum on its own sounds kind of dissonant, it sounds less dissonant when you juxtapose it with all this other dissonance. Yeah. And so the same kind of idea here with, with Hotel. Woo! Back to the A minor. And it's like, whoa! That's weird. That's kind of, uh, what's going to happen? Oh, okay, we're, we're, it's still in the creepy hotel. It's fine. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's Luigi's Mansion, but it's, it's fine. It relatively. is pretty Luigi Mansion. Yeah. Mm, yeah. All right, now play the mashup of, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> now end it the, the only way you know how. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I like that. All right. That, that's, that's the, the freebie ending. You can mm-hmm. look, you can end any tune with the bomb um, with the bomb anything. ending. Yep. The the om. Um. <laughs> the om um, the om um ending. <laughs> uh, so Fangamer was asking about buy something, will ya? There's actually yeah. a lot of tunes in Earthbound that are in the key of G, including this one. Um, uh, we got this. just makes me feel yeah. like I'm on a farm, you know, and I'm going yeah. out to water the chickens and milk the cows and mow the water the, the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I heard something happening right at the end there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, even be even before that. It, it okay. Like... Oh yeah. Right. There. So this is sort of a chromatic approach, right? Yeah. So the the whole tune actually it's a guav stopper. It's a guav stopper. There it is. I take it back. It's not in the key of G. It's a uh, it's it's in C. Yeah. It resolves there, but it just keeps lingering on the yeah. It just keeps lingering on the five. It's like, are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna buy something? You gonna finally buy something? <laughs> It's constantly trying to decide: Are you going to buy something or not? Are you going to? Are you going to? And then this is just the two, two, five, five one. one. So you're That's hearing right. that, that that five one again, which is just literally everywhere. That's yeah. the name of this this this. Uh, it's the stream. five. It's yes, the, the fifth five, movement. The, ho- the homeward bound stream. It's how That's you right. Get home. The, <laughs> the earth homeward bound. bound. Earthbound home f- fifth movement um, yep. spectacular. Yeah, but that little movement there of going from the four chord So that's a cool little chromatic movement there. Very gospel. Also used in a lot of, you know, just ragtime. This this definitely has like that ragtime kind of stride piano kind of thing going on. Like some Scott Joplin there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. It goes to our G chord. To our six. Two, five, one. There's a bunch of uh, uh, Mario songs that do that as well. Yeah. In, in that it's same a, key and everything. It's a major trope. Yep. It's a major yep. trope in jazz. And jazz coming from uh, blues, coming from church music, mm-hmm. coming from uh, 
a lot of stuff. And what we have also, um, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> we, we've been watching Salute Your Shorts uh, on, on the Guab stream. Of, of course. course you have. And yeah. uh, but the things that last forever are our dear friendships. Perfect example. Same kind of, that, that trope is ubiquitous in a, a lot of music. I can listen to four to the sharp four diminished to five to five diminished to six all day. Jer Roke is on point, and that's what you get all day with Richard T. Richard T is all about that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. such a such a powerful chord progression it, it, it takes you through such a, 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 a musical and emotional journey there's so much going on there so that's like yeah then that's forever our idea <laughs> it makes yeah. me wanna fart <laughs> <laughs> makes me wanna <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is really actually pretty it, it might seem simple but this stuff that we're going over is really uh it's very ubiquitous and very very relevant in in all music not just video game music right <clears throat> right bringing it kind of back home to this concept of the five going to the one mm -hmm. you know it all comes down to the five going to the one the five going to the one it all comes down to uh sonic getting the chili dog back at home um <laughs> the, the, as as we classically know that riff yes yes <laughs> but to, to so the the function of that five chord is to create expectation and yearning for resolution on the one chord and to make that even more of a buildup, more climactic of a resolution, you can stack all kinds of chords before the five chord, which is what's happening when we do this. So we just stacked a bunch of notes, a bunch of chords there to create some sort of big expectation. And then finally, we're back to the five chord, which is taking us to the one chord. So that's kind of what most music is built on is, is creating expectation and, and, and getting resolution. And uh, that expectation can be teased and built up however much or less that you want using all of these different um, little tropes and idioms. Jer says, uh, replace the F sharp dominant in the G sharp. I think that's, that's dominant, right? Yeah. Or sorry, yeah. not, not not dominant. Um, uh, diminished the uh, F sharp diminished, and the G sharp diminished with the D seven and E seven, and you get some magic uh, five seven. That is that is t twitch happy face. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what that is. Okay, so yeah. Is that what you were thinking there? What, what, Jared, elaborate for us. Oh, yeah. So he's saying that, that the diminished chords are just the, uh, the top of the seventh chords. And that's, that's a really interesting point. So whenever you have, you know, let's just go with like a, like a C dominant, that E 
G and B mm -hmm. flat are that's just a diminished chord. And so when you're doing that with this progression, we're going that second chord is just an F sharp diminished chord. And so mm -hmm. if you throw that D down there, you now get that dominant sound, which is the same sort of thing that we were that for that that battle gotcha. theme, that, that that first one yeah mm -hmm. all right so fan gamer in the chat was saying that we're, we're coming up to the time for closing because it's it's been two hours already my golly um i think what we could say now is uh if you haven't already hit the fan gamer follow button because they're doing these artist feature streams every thursday at 1 p.m pacific time uh, they may have us again. Um, also, I stream on Super Soul Bros on uh, twitch.tv slash Super Soul Bros. Um, also, I have my own personal brand, Guabs. I go by Guabs on the internets and uh, amongst my, my friends. Twitch.tv slash Guabs. Uh, I think I may be streaming some Chrono Trigger later on here today. Um, Dak over here in the, in the, in the bottom corner. My, my left-hand man, my leaning post... He works for MAGFest, and MAGFest is is doing a lot of streaming as well now, and uh, that including informative video game music content. So if you're interested in what you just saw, give MAGFest a follow as well, twitch.tv slash MAGFest. <clears throat> Holy cow! <laughs> Colette's on my computer in the room, in the other room. She's on my account in the other one. Hi, Colette. Love you. Wow, yeah, I, that's I awesome. It's me, Colette. That's so great. <laughs> so, Colette, if you can type in any requests that you have, we're we're gonna do a uh, a wrap up stream, uh, like a, a stream of music. We're gonna do a little medley here. Ori. <laughs> All right, let's get so, it started. And okay, I'll, let's and get I'll it shout started. Them out to you. Perfect. Right, we so go. we got Dak. He's going to be shouting out the tunes. Everyone, just flood the chat with uh, all kinds of all kinds of requests, um, and we'll get it going here. Let's see what happens. All right. All right. Let's start with the uh, with Ori, and then go to the forest maze. Okay. for Mars <laughs> I do. There you go, there you go. That's about all, all I know. <laughs> Sorry, a song. <laughs> That's how you get out of a tune you don't know. <laughs> then it, it does have that cool. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun. Kind 
got that same like descending thing that Pollyanna's got going on. I see some root buster. Let's see. from Colette first. She, she knows that tune better than I do. All right. Hey, Arnold. Oh, yeah. Court so good. Oh yeah. All right, the classic BGM hit, Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> I'll play Clock. 
Fox by uh, Coldplay. <laughs> That's good. They're the same. They're the same song, so it's good. Chocolate rain, holy cow! It goes like, yeah, uh huh. Chocolate rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate rain. That's a right. Ra- that's a track right there. That's a cut. <laughs> we gotta put that on. I don't know that one there. Let's see. <laughs> Dak Tales. Hey, take it away, Dak. Play a little Dak Tales real quick. Everyone in the chat, Dak Tales. Metric modulation. Thank you. <laughs> it's very. <laughs> this is such a smart tune. <laughs> Woo! Give... <laughs> Woo! Dax cutting it up over there. He's cutting yeah. some. Rug. He's cutting some keys. He's burning up the keyboard there. And it's the two All right. five one. All right. Rapid fire round. Everybody fire. just shout out a bunch, and we're both going to play them together, but we're each going to play different songs. Perfect. So just go. It's going to yeah. go. All right, poor ears. <laughs> okay, Super Mario World. And you play Rock Lobster. Okay. gourmet race here no you're not i'm going to <laughs> i'll race you ends with the lick. Man. 
man, Dak is destroying the keys. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, and and finally to wrap it up, the Super Mario World credits. I want to thank Dak from Magfest for joining us here. He's been a hel- helping me. He's been my my lean on, my 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 Padawan, my lean on. Dak Dak Power. If you haven't already, give Magfest a follow. Twitch.tv slash MAGFest. Also, if you're interested in taking some piano lessons, uh, Dak's actually taken some lessons, and he's been taking a lot of lessons from a lot of different people during this sheltering in place. But <clears throat> myself being one of them, if you're interested in taking some piano lessons, you can reach me on Guabs. I'm on uh, Twitch.tv slash Guabs. I'm on Twitter as well, at Guabs. You can find me on all them things. Um, Give us that cheesy senior picture pose. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that too. <laughs> oh man! Woo! Also, give Fan Gamer uh, Fan Gamer a follow if you haven't already. They're doing these Thursday streams every two uh, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific, and they feature different artists. It's sort of an artist spotlight, and. Uh, y- Y'all have been part of the uh, the Super Soul Bros Artist Spotlight, curated by Dak. They're going to be doing more informative VGM streams on uh, twitch.tv slash magfest as well. You can also follow twitch.tv slash super soul bros. Holy cow, look at this. Next Thursday... Thursday at 1 p.m. is going to be Jack Murphy teaching 3D modeling and VR. Now, Jack Murphy is not just good but great people and he does a lot of 3d stuff he's he's already done something for me he, he made a special 3d printed thing which i haven't shown yet but it it's going to be popping up soon as part of a super soul bros uh merch promotion so definitely tune in for that jack's going to talk about 3d modeling that's really cool i might actually watch that i bet colette would like to watch that too She's she's working the 2D media, but the 3D media might be uh, might be the next level. That's very beautiful, there, Dak. Thanks for all the background music. Give it up for I Dak one more time, folks. Here, keep playing. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a cheesy pose with you, so keep playing, but but just smile at the camera, okay? Got it. That's clutch. <laughs> oh yeah, that the eight bit big band syncopation there. You can uh, join the Super Soul Bros Discord as well. There's a Discord. Discord.gg slash Super Soul Bros where you can chat with the band. tone resolution there we go Woo! all right all right we've done thank it you, folks thank you all uh please subscribe to the uh fan gamer if you haven't already and follow like follow subscribe do all those cool things with fan gamer uh super soul bros guabs and magfest uh MAGFest is going to have a stream tomorrow night around 9 uh, p.m. Eastern where we're going to have 8-bit music theory on, and it's going to be a blasty blast. And uh, yeah, I'll be it. there. I'll be there, and too. He, he will be there with cereal in hand. <laughs> in the hand. I'm I'll be excited. eating cereal. Boy, this is, this is so thrilling. 
boy all right well i mean i i don't think there's there's a better way to end it we've said we've said it all we got the tritone resolution if you want to know what the tritone is you'll have to tune into the next episode that's right yeah this was all about that five one Ear- earthward bound is what that's we right were- Earth, earth, earth bound word, the word earth bound, the yeah, five so, to the one, yep. the next level to take it out, out of the stratosphere of the earth is to do the tritone yeah, so. one. Or. Woo. All right, let's get out of here. All Thank right. you, Gwabs. That was so Th- much fun. Thanks, thanks again, for Dak. Me on. Yeah, we, we even got a prom photo out of it. It's great. Yes. I, I'm sure uh, there's a clip somewhere. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time, folks. All right. Later.